Hello. I am not me. I am Art, and I am welcoming you to the Most Week show. It is currently 9.07 a.m. on the 13th of December 2020, and you are here with me right now. And I tell you what, I thank you for that. I tell you what, I thank you for that. If we were allowed to be together physically, I would show my appreciation physically with a hug, with a kiss, unless, of course, you are shomanigia, a Jewish practice of not touching anyone of the opposite sex for fear of being overtaken with excitement, in which case they'll just stick to a nice polite wave and a thumbs up. As it is, the best I can do is raise a glass to you, and you can raise a glass to me as well, if you like. We like to start the show with a toast, because it brings everybody together as one before the show begins proper. So here goes. Apple juice. To dairy foods, may they be ever consumed during Hanukkah to commemorate Judith plying Honiferns with cheese to get him thirsty, then giving him wine to quench his thirst, and then, when he was off his face, cutting off his head. But this Hanukkah, guys, this Hanukkah, I assume he was a bad guy, this Hanukkah, guys, Let's not cut off heads, shall we? Let's just cut the cheese. L'chaim. Mmm. Mmm, double dip. Double dip for number one, of course. Hello. Gosh, who have we got here? Gamer Hall, hi. SJ Beck 72 hi everyone. TB Douglas, hello, good morning. Good morning to you, TB. Zaddy Shortlegs 96 hello, weaklings. We're all here. The gang's all here having a great time and having fun. Hello, weaklings. I'm using this microphone, my uh, I am smart microphone, because my other microphone doesn't seem to be too keen on working this morning, but we'll continue, uh, we'll continue working on that. And I'm sure by the, uh, by the end, we'll have, we'll have sorted something out, I'm sure. Um, but it is the most week show Hanukkah special. It is, you can't really see that thing at the back can you I can't really see that at the back because this is quite a, an extreme light good lord good lord that's an extreme light that's a bit potent isn't it um but it is the uh it is the hanukkah special it is the 13th and we are on day four of hanukkah for those of you who didn't even flip and know or something there it is you can see it a bit more there there's a menorah on the back and each one says as there's an H and an A and a K and a K and a U and an N and an A and an H. It smells like Hanukkah. It smells like Hanukkah. It's a pretty clever design. Pretty clever design. Um, it is the Jewish festival festival of light. We have a light here. We have a light here. Obviously, this light can be changed color-wise if someone wants to redeem some uh, points. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, though. I'm going to be honest with you straight off the bat. 
I didn't know a lot about Judaism before this week. It was just a thing that some comedians did. But then I looked up an article written by Jewish writer Bob Gorman for JewishJournal.com entitled, What Does It Mean to Be Jewish? I thought that would be a good place to start. Good morning, Killer Kilch. How are you? Let's do this up. Gosh, that's bothering me. What does it mean to be Jewish? Bob says that being Jewish is all about well, several things. He gives a short list. One of them about God consciousness, being aware of God, which every episode of the Most Week show is about in a way. In a way. Um, uh, Bob also says that it's about keeping kosher which is difficult to do um, on a show like this, um, because I don't generally eat, so that was out. Uh, keeping the mitzvot, uh, which is about being commanded by God, which I'm not in love with. Um, I feel like we're more of a mentor-mentee type relationship, so we won't be doing much of that. He also talks about the indescribable feeling of being a part of history, which, I mean, we make live-tainment history, every single week on this show. So again, that's covered. Here's one, though. Having a Jewish sense of humour. Boom, that is one that we can sort out nice and easy. You'll notice this week uh, the DOI rewards, uh, as well as uh, all of the other classics, uh, include Tell Me a Jewish Joke. So if you want to redeem 150 points, which Killer Kilch has done already. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. How exciting. How exciting. Let's uh, Let's work out what we're doing here. Let's work out what we're doing here. We're going to add a new thing. Um, it's going to be super duper fun. Super duper fun. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to do this. It's, it, it's all going to be worth it. It's all going to be really powerfully worth it, guys. Uh, let's go for... Okay, let's go for that one. Let's go for that one. We've got we've got some disclaimers here. We've got some disclaimers um, because obviously there is, you know, a, a slight. Uh, some of you might be thinking I can't really tell Jewish jokes because, of course, uh, I am not Jewish. Um, but I have got that covered. Okay, I have got that covered. So let's go over here. Let's find our joke over here. Here we go. Seasonal readings. Seasonal readings. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. Here we go. Which one do we do? Which one do we do? Gosh, there's so many of them. That's the problem. That's the problem. Uh, okay, here we go. Jewish joke. Jewish joke. Here we go. Here we go. A rabbi has a heart attack. And as he clutches his chest, there's a single thought going through his mind. You're going to die, and you've never eaten pork. Luckily, he survives the heart attack, but all while he's in hospital, all he can think about is never having eaten pork. So the day he gets let out of hospital, he goes straight to a restaurant. The waiter says, what do you want? The rabbi says, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Give me a full suckling pig. Okay? A full suckling pig. Hmm? They're cooking the pig for a long time. The rabbi's nervous to see somebody that he knows. He hides behind the menus. He sits in the darkest corner of the restaurant, and luckily... Nobody comes in. Three hours later, they bring out a gorgeous-looking suckling pig. Beautiful crackling. An apple in the pig's mouth, the whole deal. Uh, the whole nine yards. Just as he's about to tuck into this pig and taste forbidden pork for the very first time, a member of his congregation walks into the restaurant. Shocked, the man shouts out, Rabbi, what are you doing? And the rabbi replies, can you believe these guys? I order a baked apple and this is how they serve it to me. Uh, stereotypes, when used in humor, can provide a commonly understood expectation that can be then subverted on the strict understanding that they represent an idea and not reality. While some rabbis are loose with the rules, others stick to the rules religiously. And there's a disclaimer to make it all okay. Make it all okay. Kapow from uh, Sarah Kilch. Uh, of a lot of people really enjoying that, really enjoying that, and I'm I'm glad you are. I'm glad you are. Cause I, it's it, we've got loads of those guys. We've got loads of those. So feel free to uh, redeem that whenever you wish. Okay, the final thing that Bob talks about. Here we go. Kapow, kapow. Oh, uh, the final thing that Bob talks about. 
um, is uh, as being essential to Jewish identity is a focus on learning. He writes, and I quote, Looking at our history, I believe one of the essential tenets that helped us as a people survive all the ordeals was our love for knowledge. Even in persecution, tribulations and exile, we saw it as just another opportunity to learn and enrich the mind. This is profound, and I identify with it. Today we can see the manifestation of this love in that there is a disproportionate representation of our people at the top of almost every profession. Little braggy. But the point that he's making is sound, I think. So this show, in respect of the Jews, is going to be educational, okay? It's going to be very educate. Well, how educational is it going to be? How educational is it going to be? Well, I would have to say as educational as, um, as educational as, um, as educational as, wait, I haven't changed this, I don't think. I haven't done to change this. It is not as unpredictable as, although that, that couldn't have been predicted, I think. <laughs> it is, of course, family simile as educational as. Beautiful. Seamlessly done. Family simile. Family simile. What will the answer be? As educational as what? That's right. Use your imaginospheres to think of something creative to finish off uh, this simile. As educational as. This segment is all about pushing forward the boundaries of language, guys. So really engage your imaginospheres to think of something unique. What has taught you stuff? What has taught other people stuff? If it's something that's taught you something, maybe let us know what it taught you. I mean, I don't want to do your work for you, but really get creative there. And at the end of the show, I'm going to pick a winner. And if that's you, your name is going to go on the bottom for next oh so we're here i mean it's, it takes a while it's a slow ticker but uh last episode's winner uh was anna karine with as thankful as the technology disruptions not me is forced to battle through most weeks it's a great simile it's a prophetic simile as it turned out because no sooner had that message been written but tech issues befell me family simile written tech issues that were predicted by family simile come to light. Now, I'm a pretty superstitious guy at the best of times because it just seems like it'd be bad luck not to be. And so now, with all of this circumstantial stuff, I am now highly suspicious in a quiet and benign way, number one, of Anna Karine and her abilities. Is she a demon? Is she some kind of pagan deity is she to bring it back to this episode's theme some kind of jewish witch or mahashafa that's true i don't know i don't know like i say i'm not a science guy but my advice to all other weaklings would just be to just just watch what you say about her and her thoughts and her opinions and her art just be just be nice yeah and if any of you do end up rubbing her the wrong way inadvertently and in the hours and days afterwards you start to feel a little bit peaky, my advice, don't call a doctor, call a priest. Yeah? Call a priest. Like I say, I don't know for sure, but it seems like it would be good practice to me. Anyway, get those similes in the chat and it could be you on the ticker for the next show. Back to Maine. How are we doing? How are we doing? Good Lord. Lots of not me facts coming out, which is wonderful, which is wonderful. Um, some great kind of uh, uh, family simile suggestions coming in through here. Uh, Juice Dota confirmed deity. Ooh, I mean, you'd know, dude. I mean, you're... <laughs> uh, Sosa Flo, excited about the jokes. Other people asking for the jokes. I don't think Monkey Pixie Rules, I will say, I don't think there is any um, the, in the in the stash that I found, any knock-knock Jewish jokes. Um Say what you will about the Jewish people. They love to tell a joke, and so they don't like to make them short. Uh, they do they do like to make them quite long. Quite long. Um, fantastic. Uh, TB Douglas redeemed. Uh, tell me a Jewish joke. Okay, 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 okay. Let's change this. Let's change this. Uh, let's have... Um, okay, okay. Let's do that one. Let's do that one. Uh, Jewish joke. Jewish joke. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, 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 
here we go. Okay, the year is 2028, and the United States has elected the first woman, as well as the first Jewish president, Sarah Goldstein. At her inauguration, her mother sits in the front row and leans over to a senator sitting next to her and says, see that woman over there? You see that woman over there with her hand on the Torah, becoming president of the United States? Do you see her? The senator whispers back, yeah, I do. And the mother says proudly, you know, her brother is a doctor. Stereotypes, when used in humor, can provide a commonly understood expectation that can then be subverted on the strict understanding that they represent an idea and not reality. While some Jewish mothers do favor their sons, others show love to all of their children equally. There we go. Gosh. Didn't that work out well? Didn't that work out well? Gosh. Monkey Pixie Rules hammering the not me facts there. Hammering the not me facts. Well done, you. Um... So, education, education, education. Let's 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 get a different let's get a different thing up here. Let's get a different thing up here. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to educate you gentiles <laughs> because the elephant in the room is that there are a lot of people out there who actually don't much like the Jews. Um, and as with so many things, people who don't like things tend to not know enough about those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you all about Hanukkah. And in doing so, I'm going to heal the world, yeah? Here we go. Confession time. Up until this week, all I knew about Hanukkah was what Ross Geller had taught his son Ben in the 10th episode of the 7th season of the sitcom Friends in the year 2000, the one with the holiday armadillo. So I knew that the story of Hanukkah had something to do with the Maccabees. I knew that the story involved lamp oil. And I knew that the story wasn't interesting enough for the producers of the show to keep in any more than the very beginning and the very end. So I did some research. Thank you, Wikipedia. And I learned the following. Basically, back in the old days, way old days, really like crazy, crazy old days, okay? There's a civil war in Jerusalem, okay? So Jerusalem, it's two, two groups of Jewish people in Jerusalem. There are some Jews who want to just get on with people and assimilate into the dominant culture, which at the time uh, was a mix of Greek and Syrian. So lots of poetry and lots of hummus. And these guys loved it. They said, you know, we're going to be Jews, but we're going to we're not going to be in your face with the we're kind of just going to be Jewish. Yeah, let's say that Jewish. But then there's this other group. They're super dedicated Jews. They're named the Maccabees. They call themselves the Maccabees after the dude in charge, which, side note, a tremendous show of support, I think. You love to see a group of guys really getting behind their leader. That's really lovely to see. So civil war between these two groups, lots of nasty insults that can't be taken back, sadly. And the traditionalists win. The Maccabees win this civil war within Jerusalem. And as often happens, after a victory in armed conflict or a fantastic Twitch stream, confidence was high, okay? They were absolutely flying, and the Maccabees thought, you know what? We've taken the city. We've taken the city. Jerusalem is ours. Let's take the whole flipping country and drive out the Seleucids, who were in charge at the time. And fair play to them, guys. Here's the good news. They did it. They did it. Bye-bye, Seleucids. Off you pop, back to Syria. We will keep this temple for ourselves. Thank you very much. So you've got all of these Jewish people in this temple. They've just won driven the Seleucids out of, uh, out of Israel. They've just won. But that's where things get interesting, guys. That's where things get interesting. And we shall see just how interesting they get in this dramatization of the birth of Hanukkah. This is a world premiere. I, not me, shall be portraying all parts in this particular dramatization of the birth of Hanukkah. When I am dressed thusly, I shall be portraying Menachem, the nice guy of the Maccabees. If you ask him to help, he'll help. 
He's also a big wine guy, but that's not going to come up here. And when I am dressed thusly, I shall be portraying Zacchaeus, the cool dude of the Maccabees. <laughs> he always has his arms folded, that's his thing. And when I am dressed thusly, I shall be portraying Lazarus Face, the Maccabee hype man. <laughs> it's an unofficial title, but he does his best just to try and kind of keep the vim and vigor alive in the temple. And if anybody has a frown that needs turning upside down, Lazarus is the guy who always has a joke or a sweet or a tickle. I think it also important to point out at this stage that I have no knowledge and very little interest in finding out about oil lamps. Hey guys, hey guys, listen up, listen up, I just thought of a cool thing. What's got 800 thumbs and just drove the Seleucid Empire out of Israel? This guy, these guys, you guys, all of us guys, right? That's a stupid joke. Yeah, okay, it didn't work as well as I'd hoped it would, Zacchaeus, but I'm just, oh, just so proud of all you guys. Such a great achievement, yeah? Really, really good. I will say, though, that I am trying to read right now, and it's getting a little dark. So, does anyone mind if I turn the light on, yeah? Just turn the light on. Oh, gosh. Oh, bad news, guys. We've only got enough oil left for one night's worth of light. Okay, does anyone mind going out and getting some more? I would, certainly, but I'm, um, I'm doing the light. So, anyone? I know where there's some more oil. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's awesome, Menachem. Way to get involved. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. How far away is it? Uh, like four days away. Oh gosh, well that is quite far. I suppose we can just put up with three dark nights though, can't we, after this one, because this is one night's worth of oil. Yeah? Well, no, four days away, like four days there, four days back, eight day journey, overall. Oh really? Oh, that's a lot further. Twice as far. That was pretty misleading the way you said it before though. <laughs> I understood. Okay, will you go and get the new oil? I'll turn this light on here. There we go. And then for the other three nights, I suppose we can all just evolve into those fish that live at the bottom of the sea and don't need eyes anymore because it's always dark, right? <laughs> Take care. Hey guys, I'm just trying to complete a 500 piece puzzle of a bowl of matzo ball soup, um, but it's actually getting pretty dark. Does anyone mind if I turn the light on? Gosh, what am I saying? Turn the light on. We don't have any oil. We only had one night of oil for the lamp last night. We used that up last night. There's no oil left. Sorry guys, I don't know what... Wait a tick. No, we do actually have a bit of oil. Still a little bit of oil left, guys. Okay, that's a stroke of luck, isn't it? I thought we'd use it all up last night, but we didn't use it all up last night. It's still a little bit left. Okay, so let me turn the light on here. There we go. It's probably not going to be enough to last the whole night, but I suppose even if I just get the edges of it, that'll leave me in a pretty good place for tomorrow. The edges of what? My puzzles are chaos. Pay attention. Hey guys, I'm just trying to chop some vegetables for a bowl of matzo ball soup that I got the idea to eat last night from that puzzle that I was able to complete because that little bit of oil actually lasted all night incredibly, but it's actually getting pretty dark here. So I'm gonna turn the light on, try to turn the light on if there's any oil left, which there definitely isn't because it was all used up last night. Does anybody have anything else that we might be able to burn in the, wait guys, hold the phone. Oh my goodness, there is some oil left, guys. How incredible is this? Wow, right? Oh my gosh. Well, stroke of luck. Super duper lucky. I'm going to turn the light on right now. Okay, is that better for everyone? Is that better for everyone? Can everybody see better now? <laughs> is anyone even listening to me? Hey guys, I'm just trying to catch up on some correspondence with some of my elderly relatives, but it's actually getting pretty dark. 
Now, normally I wouldn't be checking because we definitely don't have any oil left, but we shouldn't have had any oil left the last couple of nights, and there was, so I, I think I'm just going to have a quick check. There we go. More oil, guys. More oil. Is this absolutely incredible or what? How lucky are we? <laughs> there we go. Okay. And good news, guys, because this is day four. So Menahem will be there. He will have got the oil and he'll be bringing it back right now. Do you hear that? The oil is on its way, guys. The oil is on its way. Hey guys, I'm just trying to paint a portrait of Menachem from memory so that I can gift it to him when he returns to say thank you for going to get the oil, but it's actually getting a little bit dark. Now, should I be checking for this oil again? It seems crazy to even be checking at this point. Let's do a show of hands. Let's do a show of hands. Um, hands up if you think that I should go and check for the oil. Four, okay. And hands up if you think I shouldn't check for the oil. Three. Okay, the yeses have it. I'm going to have a check. Oh my god. <laughs> Still oil. How lucky are we? Gosh. Okay. Cool, guys. Cheers. Actually, before I go, just one brief point. Um, when I ran that admittedly informal survey just now, seven people got involved. Yeah? seven people. There's hundreds of you in this temple. I can see you, yeah? Look, I understand we're all tired from the insurrection, but let's just get involved with stuff a bit more, yeah? Let's get a bit more pep, a little bit more enthusiasm for each other, yeah? Let's get each other through this, shall we? I can't be the only one pushing. Hey guys, I'm just organising my stamp collection in case anybody gives me any other stamps for some reason today. But it's actually getting a little dark. I'm just going to turn the light on. Well, try to turn the light on with the amount of oil that we have left, which should be nothing, of course. But I'm going to check anyway, right? Makes sense, yeah? There we go. There we go. Still more oil left. I mean, I'd say it was a birthday miracle if this hadn't already happened several times before. <laughs> And there we go. Huh? Oh, it's my birthday today. Hey guys, I'm just trying to do some embroidery, but it's actually getting pretty dark, so light time? Yeah? Okay. Gosh. Here it is. Still one night's oil left. I actually kind of wish that I got somebody else on that first night to corroborate how much oil was left because I'm starting to worry that I don't actually know how much oil is burnt over the course of one night. Like what is one night's worth of oil? Maybe I just got that wrong all this time. I suppose that is the problem with me always being the person to volunteer to turn the light on. If it's only me and nobody else gets involved, then that's, I suppose that's the danger, isn't it? Zacchaeus, I would say that that is one night's worth of oil. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right, now, okay, so we'll, now we've turned the, the light on. If tomorrow night there's still one night's worth of oil, you can corroborate that, right? I might not be here, dude. If the weather's really nice tomorrow, I'm probably going to go kite surfing. Ugh. Hey guys, I'm just trying to put together some flat pack furniture from a Scandinavian retailer, but it's actually getting pretty dark, so... Of course there's oil. Of course there's oil. I was about to ask whether there's any oil. Of course there's some oil. There's one night's oil left. One night's oil left. Is the chaos here? Zacchaeus isn't here. That's frustrating. Although it is perfect kite surfing weather, so I really can't blame him on that one. Is there anyone else who can corroborate that this is one night's worth of oil left? I can. <laughs> Menachem, how you doing, bro? I got the oil. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so, so much for going to get that. Although, weirdly, we might not even need it because we've had one night's worth of oil the entire time you've been away, and it's just been fine. It's just been absolutely fine keeping on going. So, uh, yeah, might have been a wasted trip. Really sorry. Wait, one night of oil lasted for seven nights? Yeah, for seven whole nights. That's, that seems unbelievable i know and yet it's been happening it's right here <laughs> so lucky <laughs> lucky lucky you keep saying lucky god yep it's me god the oil thing was me also i did it it wasn't lucky it was a miracle Wow, thank you so much, but why? I knew you had lots of things to do that would require artificial light, but you've got more oil now, so this oil that you've been using will run out tonight now. Eight nights only for this miracle, I'm afraid. This is great. <laughs> Yep. God, I have to ask, as you are the keeper of space and time and knowledge, it's been a rough old road for the Jews so far. We've weathered a lot of storms, we have persevered, and we are still here. And I cannot tell you how proud I am that we are still here. But it's tiring, you know? And I just, like anybody, I want to know that my children and my children's children will have it easier than I did. I want all of my fighting and my persevering to be for something, to be in the service of something. So I ask you, does it get better for us? Uh... Menachem, did you know that Lazarus has done a portrait of you? Ah, uh, no way, really? Uh, yeah, I did. <sighs> Thanks, dude. Quick thinking, God. Well, there we go, and we're back to the lovely, back to the lovely mic. So I, I'm hands free again now. Very exciting very exciting um yeah and it's because that the because the oil lasted for eight nights should have only been one we saw that it, it was mentioned enough should have been just one night lasted eight nights so that's why hanukkah now lasts eight nights if you've ever thought seems a little excessive there's a reason behind it okay and they give presents and all kinds of stuff so that is hanukkah zaddy short legs 96 all true backing me up. I'm not making any of this up, guys. I'm not making any of this up. It is, for me, um, a decent story. Ooh, colour bulb change. Thank you, Daniel Swan. You don't say a lot, but when you do, it really, it really adds to the whole thing, I think. There we go. That's better. That's just, just, just feels more comfortable, doesn't it? Um, it's a decent story. For me, um, I would like a little bit more of the magical oil stuff, personally speaking. I would like a little less of the bloody guerrilla war style insurrections. Uh, and maybe a love story? With a girl who's really free and kind of kooky and just kind of lets the male protagonist know that it's okay to enjoy life? I personally don't know of a single story that wasn't improved with a, with a love element. That's just me. That's what I want in my religious narratives. Um, but if you want, if you want any more information about Hanukkah, which I can't really understand, <laughs> I kind of gave it to you all there. Um, you might be able to learn more at your local library, which are shut at the moment. Gosh, that's a shame. Uh, so maybe just uh, like Wikipedia or something. Yeah, it's Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, Wikipedia. 
we shall give you a task It will not be that big a ask But all civilities of us are in to impress Please take a photo while at all Once all the options you've explored Or just use one you took before And win by Snap Quest Snap Quest Snap Quest Hawk Tis time for a Snap Quest The time of the show where I turn it over to your art yeah, we've we've seen my art. We've been wowed by my art, sure. But I'm turning it over your art, yeah? Your photo art inspired by a prompt word and judge it without mercy or apology. The prompt word this week was light, because Hanukkah is the festival of light. We just saw why. Um, and I got a, a wonderful, a, a delightful trio uh, of snaps, of a, of a questers, quest people, um, snapping away. So, shall we get to them? Shall we get to them? Let's get to them. Let's get to them. First off, wait, no, I was going to do some music, actually. I was thinking of doing some music just to try and kind of bring a little bit of uh, chillness to it. Is that, is that not, that's not too loud, is it? Maybe I'll take it down a little bit. Maybe I'll take it down a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's just do that. Just to kind of give a little bit of a vibe, yeah? I really enjoy it when we do the jazz and the Act Like Poetry Corner. I thought, yeah, let's just do us an equivalent for uh, for, for, for the, uh, for the uh, you know, the Snap Quest. Here we go. Snap Quest. Starting off with uh, your girl, Sarah Kilch. Ooh, it's music to somebody's eyes. Uh, what a snap this is, huh? This is the night sky in all of its full glory. Except, of course, it's not in its full glory, is it? And because of that, it tells an all too relatable story. We have all of us looked up at some point in our lives, looked at the night sky and said, wow. Seeing lots of stars is a wow moment. I don't care who you are. It's some of the best light that you can see. Am I right, guys? Yeah? That God created all of these stars and planets and then just didn't tell us about them all for ages so that we could find out for ourselves. Humbling. Humbling. And in that moment of awe, when we're looking up at the stars, is that blue? Is that um, something more of a. something more of a purpley vibe? I mean, I'm looking through purple glasses, so maybe that's a bad thing. Um, we have looked up at the heavens. Oh, stars. Thank you, killer. That is adding immensely to this. That's wonderful. We've looked up at the stars. We have reached for our phones. We have pointed them heavenward. We have taken a picture. We have looked at it in our camera roll and said, oh, it's never as good, is it? It's never as good. And that is exactly what we have here. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what we have. That's what we have here. We have a picture that speaks to all of the photos that are taken that just can't quite capture the glory of what they are trying to. See also photos taken at musical concerts. Just it tells a story, it gives a feeling. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so so much. This is a powerful reminder of the glory and elusiveness of light. Well done. Who have we got next? TB, wow. Look at this. Look at this from TB. The sunset is, in many ways, the grand finale of the sun each day. If you think midday was excellent, you ain't seen nothing yet, the sun seems to be saying. Much like if a movie starts well and finishes well, we can very easily forget a flabby, uninspired middle. The sunset is the stunning denouement of a day, the conclusion. And here we have an example of an absolute corker of a sunset. The rich colours, the stunning reflections on the water, the shadows on the sand creating this wonderful texture down at the bottom. This person with a dog or a small child or a cat, I suppose, though that is unlikely, here enjoying the sunset. I even like the uh, 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 
the, the, the J.J. Abrams style lens flare here. It makes me feel like I'm right in the action. I love the arms outstretched as well. For the prompt to be about light and you provide a snap that features someone really enjoying light, there's a great synergy there. Light is awesome. This person is showing how awesome it is. Give me a crown this week. You did almost all you could, TB. Almost all you could, except for one thing. Fear. Because the winner this week is... Good grief. Juice Dota and Anna Karine teaming up here. Combining efforts like two musical artists slightly past their prime who aren't quite confident that they can sell out a full tour on their own. And what an effort this is. First off, check out that aspect ratio, guys. I always like a weird aspect ratio, and you very rarely get the really tall and thin aspect ratio, which is exactly what we've got here. The tallness and the thinness and the weirdness just adds to the faintly unsettling quality of this snap. The two figures are shrouded in shadow, with the light coming from the behind, casting long, eerie shadows on the floor. Who are they? Do they want? What are they looking for in a darkened room? Ooh. Killer Kilch again adding in, again adding in a lot with this emoji work. It's top quality emoji work. Thank you, Killer. Thank you. Are they turning their back on what possibly might be Christmas decorations in the background so that they can focus more solidly for the moment on Hanukkah? Maybe. Maybe this is why this is the winner. Or maybe it's something else. I would just remind everybody, apropos of nothing, that this is Anna Karine's snap. Yeah? This is Anna Karine's snap. So we'll, let's all be super positive and complimentary in the chat. Lots of compliments, please, in the chat. Yeah? Real, real, lots of compliments. If let's, let's, let's take these sloths to be a compliment. Yeah? For our own good. Yeah? And for the good of all our loved ones and the harvest this year. Yeah? Well done, Anna Karine. Thank you. And to a lesser extent, Juice Dota. But thank you to all of our snappers. All of the Aconites who submitted your art and completed your quest. I salute you. Oh, well done you. If you have been inspired to engage with the next snap quest, Gamer Holt, truly spectacular collaborative art. There we go. There we go. Um... If you have been inspired to engage with the next snap quest, that's great news. I'm sure you'll do fantastically. Simply take a snap inspired by the word, or number, I suppose, 2020. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The next snap quest will be happening in our review of the year episode, which means that you'll need to sum up 2020 in a photo, which I'm sure will be uplifting, like small uh, uh there's uh, one of the japanese pokemon so take that snap email it to me and i am not me i am art at gmail.com and we shall explore them next time on uh, the snap quest oh and the music lasted a, a decent amount of time so we can turn that off now that's fine that's fine back to main Gosh, wasn't that good, guys? Wasn't that good? Oh, we're not we're not learning about Hanukkah anymore. We're not learning about Hanukkah anymore. There was a, a you girl Sarah Kilch redeemed write a haiku about light, so I'm going to have to do that as well. Um, and that's fine, and that's good, and thank you very much for doing that. And we're going to write a haiku. We're going to write a haiku. I should have some pen and paper, so I might be doing that whilst we uh, whilst we enjoy. So needs something that everyone's going to be getting involved with something. Something that, that I can just kind of let run a little bit. Um, perhaps... Art bet! To challenge yourself, it's artistic. Art bet! I'll give you options you can pick. Art bet! Take a guess, see if you won. Art bet! It's not for money, just for fun. Art bet! Art bet, baby. Here's a, here's a, a little, just as I grab a piece of paper to do my haiku. This is something that I learned. This is apropos of nothing. Maybe, oh, it's kind of to do with light. Ooh. Did you, so this is, this is just a blue light. There's nothing particularly fancy about this light 
in terms of its qualities or its properties other than the fact that it is blasting out light on the blue spectrum. Yeah? And I've highlighted this. Is this going to come out properly? Oh, look at that. It's like a black light. I had always assumed that black lights were like, had some, like some kind of special thing. It's just blue light, guys. It's just blue light and you have... Again, like you girl Sarah Kilch, it's just not coming out right. God, that is a snap with a lot of context to it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful stuff. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So it is art bet time. It's art bet time. And it's quite a long one. Um, so we're going to be going over, guys. But um, if you're not prepared to go over the hour for um, the Jews, then unfortunately there is a word for you. And it's not a word that you want to be tarred with. Believe me. So we're going to be enjoying our art bet. Mm, there we go. It's going to be great. Which window are we on? Run art bet. Art bet. There we go. Um, everybody's up for the art bet. Gosh, Killer Kilch, TB Douglas, Anna Karine, Juice Dota, Zaddy Shortlegs, 96. Everyone's on board for the art bet. And this, this is going to be a fun one. This is one that you can kind of play along with yourself, I think. If you want to play with yourself, absolutely i heartily encourage that whilst watching um, but let's go over to you not me you good looking son of a gun not me there we go thanks not me there today's we. art challenge will be undertaken by cameraman george everybody needs to know about the jews okay everybody even mexicans now, cameraman George likes to think that he's a pretty clever dude, correcting me often like he's some kind of friggin' encyclopedia. But when I was doing my research on the Jews for this week's episode, he couldn't even tell me how long Israel and Mexico have had diplomatic relations for. <laughs> it's 68 years, dude. Read a book sometime. Right? So I thought we would educate cameraman George just a little bit. And as we learn every single week, on I Am Smart, the Not Me quiz, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific on Twitch, the most fun way to learn is by being tested in a pressure-free environment. I have compiled a list of celebrities on my MacBook here. Look, you can see the glow of it on my hand. Ooh. <laughs> some of them are musicians, some of them are actors, a lot of them are comedians, none of them are athletes. And I'm going to test cameraman George to see how many of them he knows are of the Jewish persuasion. Some of them are, some of them aren't. It's up to George to work it out. We've come to the bathroom here because this is the only room in the flat that does not have Christmas decorations in it. So please know that I am sitting on the toilet here out of deep respect for the Jewish people. But wait, I hear you cry. How can cameraman George play this game if we can legally not see him or hear him. Well, I have rigged up two handheld lights with some colored gels. If I read out a name and he thinks that person is not Jewish, he shows the red light. If he thinks the person is Jewish, he shows the blue light. Blue means Jew. That's how you remember it. Blue, Jew, red, Gentile. Plus, Hanukkah is the festival of lights. We're using lights to play with. It's all worked out really splendidly, actually. I'm, I'm very excited about it. So that's cameraman George's art challenge. Your art bet, therefore, is simply how finely tuned will his Judah be? Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? Doesn't work. I thought I'd try it again, but it's, no, it doesn't. No, no. If the Jew fits. If the Jew fits. Back to you, not me. There we go. Monkey Pickers rules, you've got to write eight ball and then a question, okay? So like eight ball, is this the greatest show of live tainment in the world? Although one that you don't already know the answer to. <laughs> so we're learning about Jewish people, famous Jewish people, because there are some that are pretty clear and there are some that are a little bit surprising. Uh, and so it's interesting to, I think, test cameraman George and to a lesser extent, all of you, to see how many slip through your radar. 
I'm not going to say radar anymore because it, it really it's 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 not as good. If the Jew fits is a much better title. Um, I can accept that. Uh, can you make your guesses yet? No, you don't know all the details, guys. So let's have some things to consider, shall we? Things to consider. Thing number one. Thing number one. The list is ce 30 celebrities long, all of which are known by cameraman George. Okay, so there's going to be no guesswork here in terms of, oh, uh, who is that person? They're all pretty famous. They're all... Um, uh, they're all... Yeah, pretty famous and well-known people. And I, I know for a fact that cameraman George knows all of them. Okay? Thing number two. The list includes people who have converted to Judaism. Okay, so this isn't just uh, 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 biologically Jewish people. <laughs> I don't know what the official term is there. But um, uh, it includes people who have converted or married into it or whatever so these aren't just kind of yeah natural born jewish people thing number three here we go here we go i have not known cameraman george to be particularly interested in jews in the past positively or negatively so this isn't uh, a topic that cameraman george is uh, an expert in by any means positively or negatively thank goodness um, so, uh, yeah. Make of that what you will. What are our options here? What are our options? Well, it's pretty clear what the options are because, of course, there are 30 possible winners. Uh, A, 0 to 6. B, 7 to 12. C, 13 to 18. D, 19 to 24. E, 25 to 30. If you have any other questions, pop them in the chat. If not, make your guess, guys. Make your guess. And obviously, if um, Cameraman George simply ticked, you know, said that they were all Jewish, then he would get 15, because there's 15 of each. That's another thing to, yeah. So if Cameraman George gets fewer than is A, then that's a pretty impressive, for the wrong reasons, but still impressive. You should, you know, in life you should either aspire to be the best or the absolute worst. What are we saying? What are we saying? Killer Kilch going for a C. Gamer Hall going for a think D. So not super confident, but still enough to go in with a guess. That's great. That's great. <laughs> SJ Beck 72 E. Wonderful. Monkey Pixie Rule C. Zaddy Shortlegs 96 C. Emma Acton, you haven't missed it. You've got you you you're here for the art bet. Um, so to catch you up, Emma Acton, although just diving straight in with a D, to catch you up, uh, Emma Acton, cameraman George is going to be pre presented with a list of thirty famous people, fifteen of which are Jewish, fifteen of which are not Jewish. Um, uh, and cameraman George will have to essentially sort them into two piles. Okay, Jewish and non-Jewish. It's a game that we're calling If the Jew Fits. SJ Beck 72, respect that. Absolutely respect that confidence. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, guys, is that everybody? Is that everybody? Game of Hole believes in Cameraman George. I think Cameraman George respects that. It's Juice Dota. Or the what I think of in my head when I think of Juice Dota. Let's do this, guys. And f uh, like I say, I'll f feel free to to shout Thank out you for Jew or no Jew I wish you um, as we're going through the game. The best of luck. Cameraman George, are you ready? That's a nod from Cameraman George. To make this more dramatic, I think we're going to turn off the light now at this point. That's turning a light on. There we go. There we go. Not a great start there from Cameraman George. Okay. Are you ready, Cameraman George? You've already nodded yes, and now it's dark, so I can't see whether you're nodding or not. Okay. Okay. I've got my database sorted out. Let's play If the Jew Fits. Our first contestant, star of The Office, Mr. John Krasinski. No, he is not a Jew. Celebrated actress Meryl Streep. 
No, she is not a Jew. First daughter, Ivanka Trump. No, she is a Jew, converted for her husband, Jared Kushner. Star of the American Pie films, Jason Biggs. He's not a Jew. This is kind of <laughs> Thought you were so clever. Uh, squinty actor and artiste, James Franco. He is a Jew. Congratulations. On the board. We're on the board now. Oh, blood from a stone. Uh, relaxing songstress, Nora Jones. She is not a Jew. No. So that was incorrect. Uh, one of the Spider-Men, Andrew Garfield. He is a Jew. Congratulations. Well done. That head of hair. Uh, the probably the most successful singer in history with the worst voice, Bob Dylan. He is a Jew, I'm afraid. He is a Jew. Um, cool guy, uh, Canadian rapper, Drake. He is a Jew. Congratulations, yes. Star of many films. Scarlett Johansson. She is a Jew. Yes, well done, well done. Hitting more of a more of a stride here. Fingers crossed. Let's let's turn this into real results. Um, uh, insane uh, health empire magnate Gwyneth Paltrow. She is a Jew. Yes, her uh, surname originally for, from her grandparents, Paltrowich. So go away, go. bot. Say no more. Um, star of Broad City. Abby Jacobson. She is a Jew. Yes, yes. I thought I'd catch you out with that one, but no. It was, sometimes the obvious ones are obvious. Uh, Jug-eared uh, wonder actor Adam Driver. He is not a Jew. Congratulations. Um, uh, 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 wonderful actor with a, a voice that can just melt your heart, Oscar Isaac. Is he a Jew or no Jew? He is no Jew. Well done. That is a, a incredible run of six now. Correct. Well done. Star of Hamilton, David Diggs. He is a Jew. That was a difficult one, and you've really nailed it. Um, uh, vampire funny man, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is a Jew. Yes. Uh, uh, New Jersey rocker. Bruce Springsteen, Jew or no Jew? He is not a Jew, I'm afraid. He is not a Jew, I'm afraid. Uh, comedian extraordinaire, Catherine Hahn. Is she a Jew? She's not a Jew. She's not a Jew. Um, uh, Who's doing uh, better than cameraman uh, George so far? Man who, who sounds, I think, very heavy, even though he's lost a lot of weight recently. John Goodman. He is not a Jew. Well done. Uh, tiny Hobbit boy, Elijah Wood. He is not a Jew. Crazy, right? Uh, a bespectacled funny lady, Tina Fey. She a Jew? She's not a Jew. She is not a Jew. Um, uh, guy with a gap in his mouth who now looks like uh, homeless Santa, David Letterman. He's not a Jew. He's not a Jew. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. He is a Jew. Congratulations. Well done. Um, uh, Flax on the head. Actress Isla Fisher. Is she a Jew? She is a Jew. Converted for her husband, Sasha Baron Cohen, who is also way Jewish. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, he's an artist and he is Jewish beyond belief. Uh, kooky, Lisa Kudrow. Is she Jewish? She is Jewish. Well done, well done. 
Uh, late night talk show host Seth Myers. Due or no due? Well done, well done. Yes, he uh, is often mistaken for being Jewish. He says Final all of three. his uh, Jewish friends Final insist three. to him that he is Jewish, despite his protestations to the contrary. Rapper LL Cool J, is he Jewish? He is not Jewish. Of course he's not Jewish. Sometimes the obvious ones are obvious. Um, uh, classical uh, 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 beauty, Elizabeth Taylor. Was she Jewish? Dead now, but yeah, she was Jewish when she was uh, alive. And finally, here we go. He hosted Saturday Night Live last week, maybe? Jason Bateman, Jewish or not Jewish? He is not Jewish, congratulations. So you've got 18, 18 out of 30, just over half, just over half. Could you, could you pop, the, pop the light uh, back on now? just so we can see, there we go. Uh, 18 uh, out of 30, so if that was in the bracket of the uh, selection that you made, uh, congratulations, use this victory as a sign that the upcoming week is gonna be absolutely fantastic. How could it be anything but? God is on your side, and there's still a little bit of Hanukkah left. <laughs> there's still a little bit of Hanukkah left. Um, thank you so, so much for playing. Thank you, cameraman George, um, for showing that uh, maybe you're not quite as clever as you thought you were. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it just crazy? that Seth Meyers isn't Jewish. I mean, can we all just agree, despite what he says, we can all just agree that he is Jewish. Yeah, he's Jewish, Jewish. Jesus, Jewish. Yeah, Seth Meyers, Jewish. Case closed. And there we go. And there we go. Monkey Pixie rules one because of Streamlabs, fantastic. How do we all do? Who's the winners? Who's the winners? Killer Kilch, well done you. Monkey Pixie Rules, well done you. Zaddy Shortlegs96, oh, well done you. Anna Karine, a uh, oh, well done you. What a wonderful... And who... I, I would be interested in seeing how, how well other people did. Whether people did generally better or worse than Cameraman George. Um, it seemed like Cameraman George did only slightly better, as I say, than if he'd just ticked everybody's Jewish or everybody's Gentile. So it was kind of guesswork. Ooh. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for getting involved with that. Thank you everybody for having fun with it. And uh, yeah, educational as well. Educational as well, I'm hoping. Now we all know a little bit more about how uh, how some people are Jewish, but also some people aren't Jewish. Yeah, it's always best to not. Guess, let's go back to Maine. Let's go back to Maine. Gosh, well, I believe um, the silent assassin Daniel Swan uh, redeemed uh, a Jewish uh, joke. So let's see about... Let's see this one. Let's see this one. Let's see this one. Got a Jewish joke for you right here. Um, um, a Jewish woman wakes up in the morning and her husband isn't in bed next to her. Confused, she gets up and finds him sitting in the kitchen, a steady stream of tears silently running down his face. She asks him, What's the matter with you? He explains, I'm thinking back to when we were younger. Do you remember? Kissing in the back of my parents' station wagon. Which is the car for English people. Oh, I remember, she says, how young we were. It was beautiful. And do you remember when your father caught us? Oh, I do. Very vividly. How could I forget? And do you remember that he put a gun to my head and said, if I didn't marry you, that he'd make sure I went to prison for 30 years? Of course I do. You know what he's like. But I still don't understand why you're crying. The man looks at her, tears still streaming down his face. I would have got out today. Stereotypes, when used in humour, can provide a commonly understood expectation that can be then subverted on the strict understanding that they represent an idea and not reality. While some Jewish couples are unhappy together, there are many that live harmoniously. TB Douglas redeemed a 16-second chill dance party. Uh-oh. Well, let's, let's, let's maybe get to that at the end. Let's maybe get to that at the end. Let's do that at the end. But thank you very much for that. Because uh, we've got a few... We've got a couple of bits of, uh, of uh, you know... 
um, admin, as we always do at the end of our um, bosh, at the end of our uh, episodes. Let's transition. There we go. There we go. Family simile it was a great, uh, a great round this week. Lots of great ones. Let's uh, let's have a little read through. See what we've got. Monkey Pigsy rules as educational as watching not me do one times one, which is uh, one. It's one trick question, but I got there. You cheeky scamp. Uh, Juice Dota is educational as I am not me. I am art. Historical dramatization. Yeah, thank you. I I I really hope that it would be educational. Juice. I really hope that it would be educational. That people would now go through when people mention Hanukkah. They'd say, yeah, yeah, I get it now. Thanks, not me. Um, Emma Acton coming in right at the end with a tr- fantastic. As educational as Encarta was in 1997. Do you remember Encarta? Gosh. Just all of that knowledge at one's fingertips. All of that knowledge at our fingertips. We've since come further than that. We have even more than just knowledge. We have opinion. Um, Good thing, bad thing. Uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. But um, yeah, Encarta 97 was a real (coughs) mind blower. Real mind blower. Um... Uh, Monkey Pixie Rules has found some discrepancies in my problem-solving algorithm. So we're going to, you know, it's not a perfect... I, I will continue to work on the algorithm as we move forward, because obviously one times one isn't three. Uh, but th- it's saying that it is three. So th- that's... yeah. Oh, the the, the joke... yeah, Game of Hold, the joke that... So he, if he had just not married her and gone to prison he would have been free of her and he wouldn't be married to her so it's kind of you know one more jewish joke with the dance party please sadly i'm not sure there's any jewish joke that i can tell in under 16 seconds so we might do the 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 dance party as a reward as a celebration of the yeah anyway so the winner the winner of course killer kilcher's educational is a pop culture show turning on the knowledgeosphere on a sunday i like the idea of the creation of a new word, knowledgeosphere. We've got the imaginosphere, sure. We rock that every single week. Um, but the knowledgeosphere is something that we maybe maybe haven't to this point. Uh, but killer culture has made up that word, and we all know exactly what killer means, which is fantastic. And a pop culture show, always interesting to see how people define this show. I would describe it, I would define it as... Um, undefinable uh but uh yeah pop culture show some people will go for it some you know describe it as you wish just just please watch yeah um so well done killer kilch well done uh, a fantastic and very worthy uh, family simile winner there should we go back to main let's go back to main because we've got a couple of things to be sorting out here um which disclaimer do we go for now which disclaimer do we go for now um which disclosure? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to do a couple of them. I'm going to do a couple of short ones because they're, they're lots of fun and they're both on the same kind of topic. Um, so I only need one disclaimer for both of them. Here we go. Here we go. Some Jewish jokes. A pair of them. Two older Jewish men are walking by next to a Catholic church. The Catholic church has a sign out front that says, Convert to Catholicism today, and we will give you $100. The first man turns to the second man and says, $100? Why not? I'll go in. Walks into the church, leaving his friend to wait for him outside. When the first man comes back out, the second asks, Okay, so now you're you're a Catholic now, but did you at least get $100? The first man gives him a look and says, It's always about the money with you people. And then joke number two, Similar theme. An old Jewish man is lying on his deathbed, surrounded by his loving family. Is my son here with me in this room? He asks. Yes, I'm here, Dad. Is my daughter here with me in this room? He asks. Yes, Dad, I'm here. Is my wife here? Is my brother here? Are all my grandchildren here with me in this room? They all answer. Yes. The old man frowns and says, Then why are the lights on in the kitchen? 
Stereotypes, when used in humour, can provide a commonly understood expectation that can then be subverted on the strict understanding that they represent an idea and not reality. While some Jewish people are careful with money, others are less so and spend normally. There we go. And we've also got, gosh, 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 it's all kicking off now. It's all kicking off now. Scene mode. You're ready for this? You're ready for a dance party? You're ready for a dance party to celebrate Hanukkah? To celebrate the Jewish people? And just have a, a whole heck of a lot of fun. You ready for it? Because I need you all to dance with me, okay? I need you all to dance with me. <laughs> Let's do this. Wow. Wow. Just wonderful, isn't it? Just wonderful. Gosh, that may be my favorite part of every week. Might be my favorite part of every week. Let's 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 have some home art. Let's have some home art. Before the 20th of December 2020 episode, which is our Christmas episode, guys. I didn't want to mention the C word, any of the C words, gosh. Um uh, over the course of this episode, but you know, we do need to acknowledge it at some point. You can write a Christmas poem, write a poem that's all about Christmas, some element of Christmas, get it down in verse, make it rhyme, make it don't rhyme, whatever you want, and send it to me, I am not me, I am art at gmail.com. Draw a vision of not me. I'm going to keep asking. If you think I'm going to just ignore it at some point and move on, you're out of your flippin' minds. Uh, Submitter, that is art. Obviously, we didn't have it this week. We had the Jewish joke instead. We're not going to have it next week either. We're going to have number four, submit a Christmas wish. Uh, and we're not going to have it a couple of weeks out because, you know, we're just going to... They're themed episodes. But when we get back to normal episodes, we're going to go back to that is art. Uh, and I need you all to... Um, I'm going to be writing some, absolutely, but there's, I want you guys to get involved as well. So if there's some element of life, some moment in life, um, or some moment in art that you really like, email it to me, message it to me, um, and we can read it out um, on a subsequent show. But also submit a Christmas wish. What is your Christmas wish this year? Email it to me, or comment on a thing, or whatever you might want to do. Um just get it to me, um, and uh, we can read them out next week in lieu of any Jewish jokes. This is the last week for the Jewish jokes. Um, uh, even though we, I think we've all really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, next week is going to be all about Christmas wishes. What What is your Christmas wish for this year? And we're going to go through them, uh, and I'm hoping there's going to be some celebrities writing in as well um, with some of their Christmas wishes. Um, so that is it. Um Another Hebrewtiful episode over. My small hope is that in a world where there are very few Hanukkah films out there, maybe some Jewish people will make watching this episode a Hanukkah tradition. Maybe that. I hope this episode has honoured the Jewish people. They seem like a lovely bunch, and hey, there is enough of them, okay? You need to... I mean, how many are there, actually? Maybe that's a good place to... Good final piece of education. How many Jews in the world... 14.6 million. That doesn't seem like a lot. Percentage. What's that as a percentage? 0.002%. That's amazing. To represent such a tiny amount of the world's population and yet make an impact big enough that I've just dedicated an entire episode to one of their holidays. That is art, guys. That is art. Name me some Buddhist holidays. No idea. Some Hindu holidays, aside from Diwali. That is spectacular marketing, guys. That is fantastic marketing. For that, as much as anything else, well done, Jew. Deism. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and engaging. And making this, I think, the very best episode that I have ever created. Um, uh, well done, uh, Anna Karina G. Soto for winning the Snap Quest. Uh, well done, Killer Kilt for winning the uh, Family Simile. Uh, and well done, there were several of you, weren't there, who won the uh, Art Bet. 
tip top work everybody um thank you all so 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 much it it yeah it's been an absolute pleasure and next week next week we're gonna have a bumper episode do you think this episode was long <laughs> oh, next week christmas special is going to be feature length i would i wouldn't be surprised um so look forward to that i can't can't wait to to see you all for next week um i am not me i am art and i am wishing you all a very happy a very Jewish show <laughs> and a very creative week ahead. All the best to all of you. Cheers. Caravan, George, everyone thought you did pretty well with the uh, thing. I think your reward is making some breakfast bagels and cream cheese. What do you mean, though? I'm hungry over here! What a great show we all made just now. It was creative, live, and divine. You did wonderful work, so go and take a bow. Just a slightly small bow than mine. So I'll see you right here next week, same time. Oh, gosh, I just don't know. But I can promise you this, I'm going to blow your mind. Next week on the Most Week Show.